What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I'm Anique, I'm a classical pianist, and one of my favorite composers is Frédéric Chopin. During the last 20 years of my life, I studied all of the Chopin etudes, which are one of the most important parts of my repertoire, and I hope they are going to accompany me for the rest of my life. As I'm now at the end of my official studies at the concert exam, my wish was to play all of the Chopin etudes at this exam. So right now I'm studying all of the Chopin etudes simultaneously which is a super big challenge. So I thought it would be cool to share a little bit what I think is exciting and interesting about these etudes. So I would like to talk about every single etude, about the musical background, about the technical background or historical background to give you like an impression of what I'm working on right now. Today I wanted to start with one of my favorite etudes, which is Opus 25 number no. one, also known as the Aeolian Harp Etude. Before we get started, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, if you want to support me and this channel, please check out the Patreon link in the description box. Okay, let's start with the name of this etude. Now, first of all, I'm not really a fan of giving pieces a name if the composer didn't give the piece this name. Because you're already fixed on a specific image of the piece. It kind of, you know, limitate your interpretation of it. In this case, it's a little bit different because, okay, it was not Chopin who gave this name. However, Robert Schumann heard Chopin playing this piece. And after listening to Chopin's playing, he wrote in an article that he had the impression of an Aeolian harp while he was playing. And on top of this Aeolian harp, there was a wonderful voice singing a wonderful melody. So this is an information that is interesting for me as an interpret because this is like, I can't, I can't listen to Chopin, unfortunately, anymore. So this description by Robert Schumann about Chopin's playing gives me more information about what does the composer maybe want, which is not, like, completely written in this course. Now we know a little bit about how it is supposed to sound like, but how do we get to this point? Let's talk about the technique. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Mm, not so fast. <laughs> we can't talk about the technique if we don't talk about the music before. What is happening in detail in the music? Because technique follows music. Never the other way around. If I understood one thing after studying all of these Chopin etudes, it is Chopin doesn't let you play this piece on a very high level if you're only focusing on the technique and don't understand anything about the music that is behind it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the music. As we already know a little bit about this Aeolian harp thing and the voice that is singing on top of it, it already gives us some information. If we look into the scores, we have the main melody, which is always played by the fifth finger and always like the first note of the figure. After it, there are a lot of small notes which are creating this Aeolian harp feeling. Basically, if you only take a look at the right hand here, we have two different levels. We have the main melody level and we have the Aeolian harp harmony level, let's say. And these two parameters are playing on different dynamical levels. So we have the main melody, which is on a higher dynamical level, so it is, it should be a little bit louder or, you know, with more weight, basically, compared to the Aeolian harp. And everything still is playing on a piano, pianissimo level. We have the main melody on top, which has to be clearly on another dynamical level than all the other small notes. So you still have enough freedom to create some dynamical changes in the melody. And then we have the same thing going on in our left hand. We have a lot of small notes together with the right hand, which are creating this Aeolian harp thing. And then we have sometimes some bass notes, which are like supporting the harmony. And these special bass notes, they are also on another dynamical level, a little bit louder than all these small notes in the middle, but not as loud as the main melody. So in total, I would say we have like three different dynamical levels that are going on in a general piano level. You already see this is going to be very, very hard if you want to control everything in detail. And it takes many, many years of hard training and detail work and like very careful listening until you get to a point where you can just sit down and play and enjoy it. Now we clarified a little bit like the musical things that are going on here. We have uh, an idea of dynamics. We have an idea of the sound color and quality. Now, how do we get this 
technically. I see many people trying to play this etude only with their fingers. Now this may work on historical instruments, which are still using a different type of mechanics. The keys are lighter and so on. However, we are working normally with modern instruments, modern concert grands. Only playing with your fingers will not lead to a satisfying result. I would describe this etude as a very intense and detailed study of using your wrist and your elbow to create sound, to create speed, to create dynamics. Now, as we said before, we have one main melody, which is often played by the fifth finger. So we need a little bit more weight on this fifth finger and all the other fingers with all the small notes need to be a little bit lighter. The weight is created by our elbow and our wrist. The deeper our wrist, the more weight of our arm goes into the fingers. The higher the wrist, the less weight. Now let's take a look at the first figure of this piece. As I want to have more dynamics on the main note, this means I have to play with more weight in this specific note. And afterwards I want to have much less weight to make big contrast between these two levels. The bigger the contrast between these levels, the easier for the audience to hear that there is like one voice that is going through this whole Aeolian harp thing. <laughs> so basically I'm starting with a deep wrist and then immediately I'm coming up playing all of these small notes and then I'm coming back and then ending at the same point again. So basically I'm like creating one big circle with my arm and I'm playing like this all the time. So let's repeat it again. We are starting with a low wrist, which means we are having much more weight in our fingers. Then we kind of come up. In these notes, we have much less weight. And then we come back down. And by coming down, it means we are also doing a little crescendo because we are adding some weight in, in our playing. So. Again, we are starting low, come up, and this will create like this circular movement in our wrist and also in our elbow. thing in this etude is that I can do exactly the same thing with my left hand. In many cases when left and right is like playing the same thing we are not really playing the same thing because our body is mirrored. If I'm moving to the right I have to use to play like this in the left to have the same feeling but if I'm playing like exactly the same things on the piano I would have to do like something like this for example, to play a scale together upwards. In this case, it's like in the opposite direction and this makes the movement extremely similar, which is, I feel like, easier for you to learn. So everyone who wants to start to use more their wrist and elbows, I would really suggest to start with this etude because it's a perfect study to get to know your wrist and your elbow and you really have to use this to master this piece.
This was the video for today. I hope I could give you an impression of this piece and how fascinating and detailed it is. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, if you want to support me and this channel and get some more behind the scenes and more detailed information about all the Chopinites and everything that I'm doing, check out the Patreon link in the description box. We will see you in the next videos. Bye. Hello. Ich komme mir richtig behindert vor.